Hi guys, welcome to the Gunshot with me, John. Today we've got rigged up the Browning 725 S1 adjustable sporter. Uh, we're going to start by having a little shoot so I can give you a fairly honest opinion of how it handles and uh, then we'll take it to the bench. Alright, let's go. Oh! 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 So a few shots, what I will say is, is it does balance quite well, it handles quite well, but actually there's something quite strangely still front heavy about it. As in, if you put it in front of something and don't continuously move it, it seems to have a um, natural ability to decelerate its lead. So even if you're putting it miles in front of something, you end up shooting mildly behind. So you have to be very conscientious of keeping it moving. Not that it's a bad thing. Uh, it's just, it's not a lazy gun. Pull. 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 So here it is in its box, the Browning 725, the 725 box, oh, that's exciting isn't it? Uh, so this Sporter Grade 1 comes in the grey plastic case, uh, this is second hand as you can see, the case has been uh, used, but I suppose that's exactly what it's for. Um, pop the case open and it reveals this gun. The chokes come in this lovely grey box, inside the box, a boxing box that's got all your spare auto safety sears, uh, an Allen key, should have two triggers but they don't supply them anymore, um, choke key and space for chokes. Uh, it's Invector DS choke, Invector DS choke is the one with a little gas ring, uh, that means they A shouldn't come loose quite as easy and B shouldn't get as dirty. Uh, and that seems to be working quite well actually, I mean they've been out for a number of years and uh, I haven't had any two seized in yet. So before we get too far into it, this little tongue here, make sure that's forward before assembly. Um, never you seem to stick so much on the 525 but on the 725 series, I think where it's just a little bit shallower, um, I found they are generally more sticky. I say, if it is stuck back, it will not go together. Alright. There you have it. Uh, so, that was the case. Let's put that away. On the back we have the Inflex pad. Uh, multiples of these are available. Uh, and they go all the way out, you get spaces. Just make sure if you get an adjustable, you get the adjustable pads. They have a little bore hole so you can actually access the adjuster. The wood, the wood is a rather clement grade too. On this one it is actually pretty exceptional. Um, on the back here. Uh, they are cut with an adjuster, and if I get the Allen key out, I'll just show you how that works quickly. They are still hand checkered, which is a, just a really lovely browning thing, and the wood to metal fit is lovely. Before I get onto this, I should say they have a very, very full pistol grip and a very nice as well. And actually, the whole nose of the gun here is set further back, so that it really does accept slightly longer hands into the back of the gun, um, if you feel the need to do that, which is nice. It's, Good that somebody's thought about people with big hands, not that mine are exceptionally big. So the adjustable comb is done with this little Allen key here. That just goes in this hole and unscrews. Uh, they don't actually need to be that tight, and if they are that tight, it's probably worth just questioning quickly. That unscrews a little bit, and the whole top will come out. Uh, there is little notches, so you can retain some mild memory there, actually. So where it's all done off one Allen key at the back, you actually have a hole free gun, more or less. So this just pushes back into place, and you get your side to side movement all done off of one Allen key. I must admit, it's quite nice. And it's a very good system, for sure. Let me bolt that back. Oh, just tight enough that it won't move, and so you don't need to go wrenching it up. These guns come as a manual safety, however they are all supplied with an auto safety bar. It has a gold adjustable trigger and this trigger blade can be changed for any browning trigger blade. 
So you've got quite nice lines that go flow around the gun here, and it is a very modern looking gun. They've gone real minimalist on the engraving, just with four lines on each side of the action, with 725 in a nice bold orange. The action is a standard 725 action, internally that is, meaning it has a mechanical trigger. The forend, like any good browning, has all of the eject work based inside here. Your ejector springs and kickers are in there. They do do a version with a rounded forend, and I would say actually that is a slightly nicer American style forend. This semi schnabel isn't actually quite as nice as a schnabel. It does not lend itself, as I said, when shooting it to too much versatility, but it does look pretty good. That said, I think I've done more custom roundings on 725s than, than most anything else. These barrels are 30 inch backboard vector pro shaped barrels. Uh, so they're actually bored at 18.7. Uh, the whole back boring is designed obviously to give more consistent patterns, less constriction on shot, slightly lower pressures, less recoil. Um, obviously this will upset hearts and minds if you say anything against it, uh, but it's a real personal preference as to what bore size you like it. Personally, I prefer a tight bore, but 18.7, isn't massive. I mean, there's people with bore boring even bigger than that. You have vented mids and a parallel top with that classic browning tram lines down the middle. And I've always liked the way these catch the light. Single white bead sight and the Inv Invector DS chokes. Uh, these are made of super lightweight stainless steel. Uh, so actually, as chokes go, they don't upset your balance too much ish. Balance, actually, I'm just going over the hinge there. Balance is pretty good on these. If anything, actually, this is a touch on the rear. Come on, I'd say I tell a lie. The balance on this is almost, almost perfect, almost perfect, and that's mostly because of the adjustable comb, which is why I've always preferred the adjustable 725s. I've found, although they are fairly lightweight chokes, they are still generally front-heavy guns in their non-adjustable formats. They handle very well, and actually in-shot experience is very different to in-shooting experience, as I've just found out uh, rather directly. We were just playing this before we brought it up here, saying that it balances lovely and it handles very put lovely, but actually there's something strange about the weight on this, the weight distribution more than the balance perhaps, that I just can't quite fathom. But who knows, that's just personal. The top lever has your buck mark on it, as no branding would be complete without that, and the whole profile of this gun is very, very sleek for a rather heavyweight gun. So although this is a 30 inch variant, 32 inches are available uh, and I believe these guns retail somewhere between 2000 and 2200 uh, depending on where you buy them from and how old it is and how long it's been sat in stock. The oiled finish on the stock does take abuse pretty well actually. I don't know if you how close you can see but there's a lot of marks and dings on this gun but you do actually have to look quite well to find them. Anyway, uh, let's go and shoot a couple more shots and see what conclusions we can draw. Oh. 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 So, in conclusion, we have a very good, all-round, very heavyweight sporting gun. My personal preference, in all honesty, I would spend, and I understand it's an extra £600, I would go for the Pro Sporting. I generally think, having shot a Pro Sporting fairly extensively, I just feel like there's something about them that handles a little bit better, maybe. Uh, although they balance fairly similarly and they spec fairly similarly, I can't say what it is about it, it just does handle that a little bit more. Um, versatile, it handles with more versatility, so that's what I'm trying to say. What we can say about it is a hell of a stylish gun. The 725 took all new lines over the 525 and that really counts for something. You know, this next to an Ultra XS, this does make an Ultra XS look like an old gun now I suppose. I do like it, I don't think I could shoot one every day, I think it would just tire me, it really would tire me. I like a gun that on occasion you can shoot 
completely naturally. And I suppose that might be the case for some people with this gun, but it might just not suit me, I suppose. So that's that. This gun really, you'll get out of it what you put in, but you do have to put in quite a lot of effort to shoot it. I enjoyed shooting it. Go and check one out if it's on your list, but also don't feel shy to go and check out perhaps a second-hand Pro Sporting or even a Pro Trap. Uh, you will not be disappointed, perhaps, if you're looking at a new one of these and getting a second-hand one of those. In terms of second-hand value, these things can be had somewhere between 14 and 1700 pounds now, which is quite acceptable. And for that money, there's not a lot that you could take to beat it. That's all from me. Thanks very much for watching. Take care and goodbye.